My favorite animal as a kid was a cheetah. And in 2023, I had the opportunity to track cheetahs in the wild and look for some of the other African cats. Oh man, what a thrill. Two of my favorite animals that I've loved seeing in the wild are cheetahs and leopards. And my goal is to hopefully see them on this adventure. And I hope that I can share some of these amazing experiences that I'm hoping to have with you. Who knows what we'll actually get to do on this. Uh, we're going to go out on morning drives, evening drive, and hopefully see whatever animals we can see. Uh, I'm pretty excited for it. I don't know what to expect. We're hoping to see some cheetahs. There's one that has a collar around it that we can track. Maybe a leopard. Big head. You can see the balls at the back. That can tell that it's a man. Seven minutes in heaven has a new meaning to me. As we spent seven minutes with this large male in Kruger Park. Just us and this leopard. It was insane. But to be honest, it wasn't the most scared I was on my Africa trip. That was when I actually ran into baboons. I went to Simonstown to swim with sharks, but I ended up finding baboons and penguins. Oh my. I landed in Hootsbury, and then we headed to Krongwe Private Game Reserve. This would be my home for the next two weeks, the GVI base. I'm here working on a book on cheetahs, lions, and also leopards the three big cats. And I don't know exactly where to start with this story. So we're gonna start with the last cat I saw and the tattoo I had. And the best way to actually explain our encounter with the cat is actually to have Will, the guy who found the cats, explain to it from his point of view. <laughs> so like, so yeah, so we were driving on the track there's a tree to our right. I flashed the torch. I see some eyes behind it, Thank you. and then I'm like, "Hang on, those those eyes and the, that that face shape, and I see a bit of a bit of bit of, bit of fur. That looks like specifically like a lion." We go a bit after. I'm like, "Eyes, eyes, eyes!" Like shouting to stop. I turn to my right, and then there's just what six female lions there. And two of them were actually males, but oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, four females and two cubs that were yeah. males and. Dude. <laughs> How does it feel? Like, what do you feel like? I can't describe it. Pretty it's cool like, feeling. Oh, it's, more, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's, it's, I mean, yeah, I, I can't put it in a word. Were it's, you supposed to be on spotlight? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be on spotlight. But, I can barely see. Wait, your glasses are broken yeah, and you can barely dude, see? I can barely see because of my glasses. I wasn't supposed to be on spotlight. It was written in the stars. <laughs> No, so glad I fixed your glasses and traded spotlight with you. It was meant to be, man. Yeah, but... Holy shit. No, the last drive is well for like... For me, buddy. I'm the last drive. Was your last drive. <laughs> so on my last drive of our two weeks, I got to have this amazing experience on our night drive. Oh, I got that on video. So cool. I'm sure you guys know, but both those cubs are males. Their paws are quite big as a result, I think. Struggle to differentiate them from the sum of the females. Look at the size of these paw prints. You can see them here being compared to a golf ball. Just to understand how big these paw prints actually are. You can see full bellies on these lions as they're resting for the evening. And one of the things you might notice is that there's only females. That's right, the female lions normally stay with the baby cubs, just like with cheetah. This spot by Will was awesome. And it was amazing getting to see the lions at nighttime, finally. But 
as we started to notice them moving around and the way some of them were sleeping, I'm not going to lie that it got a little bit creepy not being able to see them. And you'd only get to see them occasionally when one of the lights would be on the animal that you were looking at. Imagine being in the bush and you can't see a predator that is within a few feet of you. Man, my nerves were on edge. This evening it was raining and if you listen carefully, you can hear the pitter patter. But I guess the lions aren't disturbed too much by the rain, because they just chilled fairly out in the open. I wonder what lions dream about at night. What do you think? But just like all good things, this part of the adventure must come to the end, and we said a sweet goodbye and just like that the lions went back to sleep while on this research trip we did lots of things to learn more about the environment we did these awesome ant surveys where we walked into the bush and tried to figure out how many ants there were of different kinds we had some fun we also were setting up trail cams to figure out what was moving past certain areas at night time, although the elephants and rhinos would sometimes move them. Each drive that we went on either started in the dark or ended in the dark. And it was awesome, those open airs and, what's up, Will? It was just a great time to actually be out and just feel the air in your face. But let's be honest, we're here to see cheetahs. The only thing cooler than walking in on one cheetah is walking in on three cheetahs. Yeah, that's right. I got to walk in on three cheetahs. This is referred to as a coalition. The coalition is often a group of cheetahs that are related in some way. It's often brothers or a father and son combo and they hang out together and sort of protect each other. You'll notice that the cheetahs are looking in different ways as they're resting. So each one's sort of responsible for that area to protect each other. The fastest land animal is less than probably 15 feet from me. Maybe we'll say 50 feet just to keep everybody happy. But, wow, they don't even seem to care about us. I guess they know that we're not here to harm them and we're just observing them. This is an experience that I will always remember. My first time walking in on the three cheetahs they can run upwards of 120 kilometers an hour and I'm just this close. I'm glad that they weren't interested in us. They have distinctive tear drop markings on their face and solid dots all over their bodies. They are diurnal, meaning that they are active during the day. Although sometimes it means they're just sleeping and resting. They are the weakest of the large predators and often lose their prey actually to the stronger predators. Like the lions, the leopards, even hyenas. Cheetahs on average live 12 years. Females will only move about 4 kilometers a day. Whereas males will actually move upwards of 8 kilometers a day. Approximately 10,000 years ago, there were only a few hundred cheetahs, creating this giant bottleneck of genetically similar cheetahs. So nowadays what they do is they'll actually have cheetahs from one reserve get shipped to another reserve so that they can keep them from inbreeding. The one on the right, yeah. Zulu, the one behind is the flower and the one on the left is... 
No, that's Zulu, the, the dominant one that just flipped over. And I just got that on video. It's not just cheetahs that need a break in the bush. Humans do too. So what we do is we stop often for Pooza at least once a trip where we get to have all these snacks and enjoy. Remember, what goes in must come out. Cheetah poop. So Henry pointed out a couple cool things to me. This is where the coalition cheetahs like to hang out. You can see evidence of poop. Even more poop. This is a little bit older. This is some freshy. The male coalition likes to hang out by this cheetah mound. And you can tell that by how much poop is here and even seeing the scratch marks by the poop showing you how and what they do when they do their business. And you can see it compared to a golf ball again. Telemetry. This is the art of using a radio collar to track cheetahs. This is what they originally looked like. But nowadays they've changed quite a bit. And so how telemetry works is you stand with the T-limb and you spin it around in hopes of finding a radio signal that is being transmitted from the collar that the animal is wearing. So in this case, we're looking for the female cheetah and we're gonna spin this around. It can be done from really high ground like Beacon Rock, or it can just be done from the vehicle. And you hold it up and as you get closer, you start to get more beeps. And if you get really lucky, you actually get to see the female cheetah. This is our first encounter with the female cheetah. Female cheetahs live solitary lives except when they mate, and they aren't territorial, whereas the males sometimes live in coalitions, that's groups of two to four, and they are territorial during breeding seasons. We had been tracking this cheetah most of the drive and weren't having much luck. And then we realize it's because she was on the move so much. What I really like about this footage here is you can see just how well the cheetah blends in. Although you know that there's a cat there, it moves slowly and those dots help hide it so well. I keep losing it every once in a while. Are you able to follow it as it walks through the bush? I still have her. It's only really walking and moving so much today because it was a little bit cooler and it's she just turned left now trying to hunt and find some food. But she was quickly gone. And then we found her another day as she walked out into an opening by a river. And even though she stands out on the sand, she still kind of blends in depending on the angle that you're looking at her. This was an amazing spot from Harry, one of the guys on the trip, as she had darted behind us and then vanished. And he had happened to look down the embankment and saw her on the other side. Man, getting to see her from above was kind of cool. No, it wasn't from a hot air balloon like when I saw my first leopard. One of the differences, cheetahs have a smaller head than a leopard. Here you can see a cheetah's skull, the top view and the bottom view of the skull. When an animal gets brought from one park to another, it gets put into a boma. This is the original boma, and this one held the cheetah that we were tracking. There's actually two bomas that have been built at Karangwe. This is the other one. This is the newer one, and it looks a little bit bigger than the first one, but this is where the animal gets put to make sure that it climatizes to the area. Unfortunately, sometimes elephants will come through and break the fence, and then it has to get repaired. This is a repair that happened while we were there. We just missed it happening. An hour after we went to visit the female cheetah that was in this boma, 
the elephants went through and made a second hole. That must have been very scary for this cheetah. But she'll be released from here in a little bit. We got to walk in on the original female cheetah. And she was laying on a termite mound. But as we got there, she ran off. We were lucky that we were able to find her again and walk in on her a second time. Wait, is there a cheetah here? Can you see the cheetah? That's how well a cheetah can camouflage if it's not moving. Don't worry, I promise you, there's a cheetah in this video. Yeah, do you see her? And you can see the collar pretty nicely in this video. It's similar to your dog collar or cat collar if you have one of those. And it just sends a radio signal. But what's different between the men or the male cheetahs and the female cheetah is she has to be more observant. Her head's always on a swivel, always moving and observing what's around her. On the second day, we saw her resting in a different spot on the riverbank. It was odd because most of the time a cheetah lays on high ground so that they can see far. But this cheetah seemed to pick a low ground that was cold. And maybe it meant that the other animals might not expect her to be there or come after her. So she just laid down and chilled in this riverbank for most of the morning. Again, she didn't rest, rest and not pay attention to her surroundings. She's always aware of her surroundings, but she picked this spot to help her hide, we think. One of the other differences between cheetahs and leopards, other than their heads, is that cheetahs are a lot longer and faster than leopards, and they don't really climb trees. One of the easiest visuals is that cheetahs have dots, where leopards have rosettes. Have you ever noticed the difference in their spots and rosettes? Getting to walk in on three cheetahs, that was an experience that I'll never forget. And the leopards that we got to see, oh, I've seen them from the air, but I've never seen one right beside the car. On my trip to South Africa, I actually had made a brief stop in Paris. And I saw this sign that made me think that I was gonna get to have a cool experience. And while I was in Kruger Park with my friends that I met in GVI, we had this amazing experience with this male leopard. Oh my gosh. We spent seven minutes in heaven with this beautiful creature. And the funny part is, we had almost missed this experience because someone almost went to the bathroom. It's a good thing we didn't go for Bushy Bushy. Bushy Bushy is what you call going to the bathroom when you're on safari in Africa. And it makes you laugh. But if you look closely at this leopard, you can see that those aren't spots. They almost look like little roses. And that might be why they're called rosettes. Oftentimes I get asked, how close am I actually to these animals? Well, you can see it by the tree line. We end up actually right at the road in front of where it laid down for a bit. And I was able to capture some awesome pictures. Look at those eyes. Walked off into the savanna, and it was awesome just watching this beautiful creature stroll through the savanna with not a worry in the world. This is amazing. And we would have missed this whole experience if the group had gone bushy bushy. And what actually made this better is it was just us and the leopard. And our guide, although he wanted to leave, he listened when I was like, hey, I want to enjoy this. And he was like, yeah. And we watched this beautiful creature vanish. The group was happy and we got some awesome pictures of this experience. And I thought it was just cool that we had seen a python in the tree earlier that a leopard had put there. There were two other leopard experiences. The first one was when we heard this leopard sigh. 
as we were out doing an erosion survey. And then we were talking about the erosion survey and the leopard. And I was talking to my buddy and I was like, man, I wish we saw another leopard. And as I turned around and pointed, there was this one-eyed leopard sitting there. I later heard that people were worried that he might be getting aggressive towards people. He wasn't aggressive towards us. Man, I just spotted my first leopard and it's got one eye. How cool is that? Well, thank you for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, keep enjoying wildlife.